Friday morning, everyone. Welcome to California Live. Jess is out shooting a story today, but I have a very special guest in studio. He's been in our lives for a long time, first stealing our hearts as a kid named Mouth in the classic hit Goonies. But Corey Feltman has had a lot of bumps along the way. And now Corey has produced his own film documenting his life titled My Truth, The Rape of Two Corys. And Corey, welcome. And I have to yeah. ask you, how tough was it to go back through that and kind of relive this whole Whole time again. Yeah, well, Danny, it's been very cathartic. So, on one level, it's been positive because I know that it's finally being done. This is something that I've been trying to do for a very long time. I first wrote my book in 2011, and it was called Choreography. Mm -hmm. And the book came out, it was a New York Times bestseller. It was very impactful, but the publishers were scared and they made me change the names to protect the people in the book. Before we get into the truth, the two Corys, your one. Corey, right. who's the other Corey? The other Corey is Corey Haim, for those who may not remember, but it's so important that we keep him alive, we keep his legacy alive, we keep his name alive, because this was a brilliant young actor. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of those young actors where, you know, he was so ahead of his time, if you saw his performance in Lucas, it was breathtaking. He was brilliant. You know, he made people cry. And, and to be a young kid, to be able to make people cry in a movie theater is a very powerful tool. And he suffered abuse. He suffered abuse. In this industry. And, and here's the thing, you know, it led to a lifetime of drug abuse. It led to a lifetime of self-deprecation. But where does it stem from? It's systemic. You know, it starts when they're young. And you have to kind of look at this. Why do so many child stars fall by the wayside? So there's something else going on. And we have to dig deeper to find out what the truth is. And that's what this documentary is going to do. And what is in the documentary? Are you finally naming names? Because everyone is like, what is the truth? There's uh, predator behavior in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Is that what the truth is? The truth is that when I started the campaign, my truth campaign, I said there were six names that I was going to expose. Mm -hmm. And in this film, we expose six names. That's exactly what we're doing. We're not pulling any punches. And that's why it's been such a difficult journey, because honestly, I had to go and find my own insurance. I had to find my own backers. Is there anything that you can tell us about these names, about the people, what they do, where they are? I can tell are? you that they're all different walks of life throughout our industry. Mm -hmm. So every single name that we bring out is going to be a different player in the industry at some level. Some of them will be very low on the totem pole. Some of them will be very high. The one name that is the most dangerous, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, the one that I'm the most scared about, it's going to be like Harvey Weinstein all over again. Yeah, and for people who may not be familiar with your story, how old were you when, when the I was abused? Yeah, when 14. the abuse, 14. 14. 14. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I was yeah. physically abused. I was mentally abused. I had a lot of abuse mm -hmm. from my family growing up. But the sexual abuse definitely started at the hands of the people that were working for me in Hollywood. And so, Corey, why were you the one that had to tell this story? It's a good question, Danny. It's because a year before Corey died, we'd been working on the show The Two Corys. We had already done two seasons, mm -hmm. and I was done with it because I saw that he was self-destructing on the show, so I didn't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And we had a private meeting at my home, and he pulled me aside and he goes, you know, I, I, I can't live in this fear anymore. It's killing me. I said, then why don't you just tell your story? Go write a book. And he said, I can't. I, I, I'm too much, I have too much fear. I can't do it. I'm afraid. Why don't you do it for me? I said, I can't do it for you. That's ridiculous. You're here. Write your book. Tell your story. And he goes, I, I don't have the cojones. I can't do it. He goes, but you could do it for me. And I said, well, I, there's no reason why I should do it. He says, well, what if I died? Mm -hmm. I said, but you're not going to die. Why would you die? That's ridiculous. He said, you never know what's going to happen. And if a year from now I'm gone, I want you to promise me as my brother that you're going to tell this story. And I said, well, that's ridiculous. And he said, uh -huh. call it ridiculous but I want you to promise me. So it was like, okay, okay, fine, I promise. And I didn't really think he was ever gonna actually need to call in that favor, okay. but it happened. And then it exactly happened. Exactly that way, yeah. Did your mind immediately go to that once you heard that yeah. he died? Oh yeah, I was like, oh my God, I made that promise. You're naming names. Mm -mm. It's some pretty heavy allegations here. Do you fear for your life? Uh, absolutely, 100%. That's why I have to have armed security with me everywhere I go. It's crazy. I mean, I've already had two attempts on my life, and we show that during the movie. We show the things that I've been through. We show all the, the, the false accusations, the death threats, the things that this group of people has put me through just to try and distract people from the truth. So is now this worth risking your life? 
I hope so. Look at it. if one child is saved, if one child is saved for the future, then I've done my part. I want to see these people apprehended. I want to see indictments and I want to see justice served and they need to be rooted out. And this is our chance. This is our uprising and the uprising is called Kids Too. We saw Me Too. It was a very polarizing effect across the world. Now it's time for Kids Too. It's time that we put our children's rights ahead of our own. And what should everyone do if they want to be part of this event? If you want to be part of this live global event, please go online to www.mytruthdoc.com and get your ticket. What will happen is you'll get a login code, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're going to type in uh, your email address and all that stuff. You'll put in your credit card or your PayPal, and all of a sudden you'll, you'll get an email, and the email will be a confirmation. So when you go back to the website on March 9th, Whatever time zone you're in, there's going to be a counting clock on the website. We'll actually show you the countdown until the movie starts. So in your area, because it's going to be on every time zone. So in your area, we'll show you when the time starts for you. And you go there, you type in your login, and boom, the movie starts streaming. And you'll be yeah. watching it live with us, who are all going to be watching it at a premiere here in L.A. at a secret location. And you said afterward, people should still tune in because there will be a panel, That's right? right? A discussion there's after? There's going to be okay. a live Q&A panel after the film plays. All right. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Corey, and thank, thank you. you for sharing your story. Thank you yeah. so much. I really appreciate yes. your help. Thank you for supporting this. We'll be back with more California Live.